Hello everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you for joining the circle to meditate together, to strengthen the thought forms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Over to you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. And today we are focusing on um, goal seven, um, affordable and clean energy. And we just remind everyone that um, we gather once a month at the new moon to focus on this shared vision for the common good that is expressed through the UN's Sustainable Development Goals. So we come together to participate in this group meditation on these formulated thought forms of solution that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. And these SDG thought forms are helping to create physical conditions that will lead to the transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Through this meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many people's minds and hearts as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many different actions. And we use the opportunity of the new moon cycles and the timing of the new moon with the available astrological energies to distribute, radiate and anchor this intention on the physical plane. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. So uh, we welcome everyone again and over to you, Dot, who will welcome everyone to hear you all um, in the naming circle. Thank you, Rebecca. Welcome so yes, as we unite our hearts across distance, I will sound your name, your first name in alphabetical order, beginning with those who are panelists and organizers today and then going to attendees. When I say your name, you, you will have been unmuted by us, but you may still need to unmute yourself and then kindly state your name and where you are calling in from. So I will begin and then there will be a 10 second pause if you have not uh, unmuted and stated your name and where you're calling in from. I will welcome you and move on. Dot Maver calling in from Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. Barbara. Barbara Valocor calling in from the Catskills in New York State in USA. Daniela. Daniela from Brussels, calling in from Brussels, Belgium. Welcome, Barbara. Welcome, Daniela. Darcy. Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area, USA. Welcome, Darcy. Martha. There are three of us. Martha Gallagher, Chandler, Arizona. Maria Cristina Donadieu, Arizona, USA. Maria Cristina Amaral, Brazil. 
Welcome, Martha, Maria, Christina, and Christina. Rebecca. Rebecca Hood, calling in from the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. Thank you. Well, welcome, Rebecca. Reiko. Yes, Reiko. I, I'm calling in from Tokyo, Japan. Thank you. Welcome, Reiko. Alexander. Uh, hi, it's Alexander Ilchuk joining from Phoenix, Arizona. Welcome, Alexander. Annette. Annette Ebbett. Calling in from the South Island of New Zealand. Welcome, Annette. Annette Loeffler. Well, I'm, I'm also calling uh, Annette, but I'm calling from Soru, Denmark. Welcome. Europe. Welcome, Annette. Avon. Avon Madison from San Francisco Bay Area, USA. Welcome, Avon. Barbara Anabali. Welcome, Barbara. Barbara Darden. Welcome, Barbara. Karsten. Yeah. Karsten Dunk at Denmark. Welcome, Karsten. And Birgit? Welcome, Birgit. Christine. Christine, you are muted on your end. Welcome, Christine. Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Diane Adams. Diane is here. Uh I'm grateful to join you today. I'm in California, the USA. Welcome, Diane. Diane McKeague. Good morning from Portland, Oregon in the USA. This is Diane McKeague. Happy to be with you this morning. Welcome, Diane. Francine. Uh, welcome, um, Francine from uh, Montreal, Canada. Welcome, Francine. Helen. Mm -hmm. Helen. Helen. Helen Franklin. I'm uh, good to be here. Hello, everybody. I'm near London in the UK. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Helen. York. Yoke, you are muted on your end. I am Josette from uh, France near Strasbourg. Hello, well, everyone. Hello, Josette. Josette. Welcome. Julie. Welcome, Julie. Karen. I'm a little bit behind unmuting, sorry. Uh, I think Julie just might have unmuted herself. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings from Karen in Southern Oregon. Welcome, Karen. Lucy. Hello, this is Lucy calling from Geneva in Switzerland. Welcome, Lucy. Lynn.
welcome, Lynn. Maria. Oh, oh Maria. Lynn? Ha, ah, Lynn. <laughs> Go ahead, Lynn. Okay. Maria? Hi, Maria. And Bart, I'm here too. Hello, everyone. Carmel, New York. Welcome, Maria and Bart. Nicholas. Nicholas from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Nicholas Volkmanek from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, USA. Welcome, Nicholas. Olga. Good evening from Athens, Greece. I'm Olga de Liviani. Welcome, Olga. Rene. Rene, I am in, from Montreal, Canada. Welcome, Rene. Richard. Hi, Richard from Mapleton, Australia. Welcome, Richard. Robin. Robin in Kansas City, Missouri, USA. Welcome, Robin. Roswitha. Welcome, Roswitha. Sharon. Hi, um, Sharon Deep from New York City, USA. Welcome, Sharon. Sheldon. Hello, friends. This is Sheldon calling in from Chandler, Arizona. Welcome, Sheldon. Susan. Welcome, Susan. Welcome all. Over to Thank you, Bob. You. Yeah, good. Thanks, Doc. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody. <laughs> this is Barbara. I'm going to start, uh, Darcy and I are both going to do an alignment and I'm just gonna start us off. So um, attain some measure of quietness within yourself, leaving behind the outer world. Find the still quietness in your center. And realize we are all part of the human family. Some are more soul conscious, some are less but we're all headed in the same direction. See yourselves as part of the new group of world servers, the heart center of the service network. Become aware of the group the worldwide group. See the living Christ as the center of the group soul. Become sensitive to these energies. Open yourselves as a group to the energy from Shambhala. See yourself as a cell within the body of the whole. All is connected. The energies coming into Shambhala through the hierarchy into humanity, we are all a part of everything. Darcy. The SDG 7, Affordable and Clean Energy. 
Let the group build the integrated thought form as the soul upon the mental plane, as a triangle of dynamic will, essential law, and lighted intelligence that streams forth the living, illumined mental substance into the targeted goals of SDG 7. We stand as a group unity in the year 2030 and see universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. Double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency. Enhance international cooperation facilitating access to clean energy, research, and technology, including renewable energy, energy efficiency, and advanced cleaner fossil fuel technology, and investment promotion in energy infrastructure and clean energy technology. We see expanded infrastructure and technology upgrades, supplying modern and sustainable energy services for all in the developing and least developed countries. Small island developing states and landlocked and developing countries in accordance with their respective programs of support. Together, let us say, stanza one of the great invocation, followed by the sounding of the sacred word, the Om. Let the forces of light bring illumination to all mankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May men of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all men be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part. Om. This is Barbara again. I'm going to just talk a little bit about the energies of Taurus in the context of the SDGs. Um, first, I would like to read a passage from Dinah 2, which when I read this, it was like DK was completely projecting and prophesying the SDGs. It, it describes them exactly. Evidence, however, of the growth of the human intellect along the needed receptive lines can be seen in the planning of the various nations and in the efforts of the United Nations to formulate a world plan which will eventuate in peace, security, and right human relations. It is interesting to note that from the very start of this unfoldment, three occult factors have governed the development of all these plans its clear-cut significance, unperceived as yet by you, in the setting of a time boundary by the nations who formulate these plans, within whose announced limits certain objectives are presumed to be possible of attainment. So we can see since the beginning of the Millennium Development Goals in 2000, how this human planning has been going forward by all of the countries of the world. It's, it's quite phenomenal to me. Um, Taurus really is concerned with desire and desire leading to aspiration. And 
as we see more of the planning going on, we can we can see the evidence of the will aspect in humanity unfolding in its ability to, to make long-term plans as a whole, as a whole, every country. And the incoming Shambhala force is stimulating this will, and we can see it everywhere. Um, and uh, this is a quote, enlightened fusion of the individual with the divine will. This is going on rapidly as people realize that until we work together to, for a sustainable energy and all of the goals, we, we really won't get very far. And of course, um, the manifestation of the will nature can have good or bad consequences. As we see today in the pollution and warring ideologies going on all over the world. So we're having a reorientation of the will. The not so the, the negative aspects of the will are are there for everyone to see and and make a choice. Taurus rules the new group of world servers, or as many people are now saying, the group of world servers. And it's the the, the key word for Taurus is as everybody knows, I see. And when the eye is opened, all is light. The Taurus has works with the single eye, the single unified eye, illuminating the path forward as it rushes forward on the path. Now, also, uh, the planet Uranus is now in Taurus for the next eight or so years. And Uranus, of course, rules Aquarius. So we have very, very positive um, aspects for a, a growth and a growth of awareness of these incoming energies. Uh, Uranus also is very electrical in its nature and it has to do with things happening suddenly. So we may see a lot of sudden changes that we didn't expect. Um, the esoteric ruler is Vulcan and the exoteric ruler is Venus. And these are all, all closely related to the Pleiades and the Great Bear. I'll just wrap up with, in terms of aspiration, we can also see now how humanity, it, the, the, the crisis of climate change is, is really beginning to become real. So people's aspiration to change things is really becoming heightened as there is a, a sense of urgency among people that normally wouldn't even think, talk about these issues. So the idea of uh, goal number seven with clean and available energy for all has to do, it must be implemented as fully as possible to avoid and to try to mitigate the effects of climate change. I'm finished. So, so Reiko, over to you. Yes, thank you. Today, I would like to give my speech from Japan on this SDGs, the goal seven, the affordable clean energy. On this May in Japan, Emperor Naruhito ascended to the throne as the new imperial era known as Raver. Now we are enjoying a festival holidays for 10 days and today is the last day. And next year, 2020, the Olympic Games will be held in Tokyo. So it seems as if everything is going perfect and Japan is the best country. But it is not true. Many Japanese know that there are many problems and hidden pollution that are still not resolved yet, which is well covered behind the illusion of economic growth. One of them is Fukushima nuclear plant, power plant. The giant earthquake of 2011 not only killed 15,000 people, 
but made everyone more aware of a terror of radioactivity. Indeed, we are separated by nationality, passport, and borders, but the radioactivity has no border and separation in nature, such as wind, air, sea, water. Through many natural channels, we experience the fear of polluting the world. I will never forget how I was frightened in the moment of explosion. But not only the day of 2011, in this moment in Fukushima, there are 190 children with cancer, 10,000 people are under evacuation and still unable to return their home and 20 times the radioactivity of international standard is still measured there. The teaching of Fukushima expands the chance to strive to make full use of natural power sources. This effort will help open a new frontier in technological innovation and create new job opportunities. The world citizens, citizens are now more consciousness, conscious about the harmlessness of natural energy, not only for people but also for the nature. The, the experience of Fukushima told me that even with advanced technology, anything people manage cannot be perfectly controlled. The natural energy is felt more familiar than the nuclear plant which is placed in a far away from the town and controlled in a maximum strict management including the guarding against terrorism. But the natural energy is more frankly opened and become aware of coexistence and co-prosperity with the natural world. Japan is ironically first country of head by the nuclear bomb to Hiroshima and Nagasaki and 66 years later, this time we ourselves caused the damage to us, people and nature. But Japan is still activating the net nuclear power plant without turning into natural energy, energy. So what is there? Why? We have an illusion of economic growth. That is, we must continue to grow. Without growing, we cannot survive. If you stop growing, we may die. This fear causes people refusing to think. Why does this obsession happen? I believe that if there is an expansion of consciousness on sharing and loving, living a simple life, and thinking of the seven generations ahead, including the kingdom of nature, we can get out of this illusion. By promoting clean energy through SDGs, the United Nations and many environmental organizations are not taking obvious way of opposing the natural, uh, opposing the nuclear plants, but by concentrating their investment on clean natural energy. So it may take time for the developed developed countries to transform the energy policies because of vested interests. Maybe developing countries will embrace to active, activate clean energy. What is necessary to afford energy to all the people living on this earth? Technology? Yes, but not only technology but also the spirit of sharing and knowing the earth is a single organ, 
organism. Closing my speech, I would like to share the meaning of braver new emperor era, that it is the name of the uh, emperor era in Japan. Please look at the, uh, the, uh, the slide. There is two um, Chinese character, and the first, this is Ray. The meaning of sound Ray is Ray, it's light and life. And meaning of the character Ray, this character is a person who play under the home of spirits and wait for revelation. And uh, here is the character change to uh, the, the picture change to the character. And next war, this meaning, meaning of sound war is I or me. And this is heart chakra and it means love. And meaning of character of war is the harmony with God and nature. And here is the uh, the picture with the uh, the the rises, and this is the uh, gift from the nature, and which is from the God. And I believe this uh, new age, just starting from this month, is a harmony with people and nature and God. And also, um, this river means in Tibetan world. Tibetan vocabulary labor means hope. And I hope that um, the, uh, the goal for the new Korean energy will be, um, will be successfully done by people's, um, people's intelligence and uh, sharing. Thank you very much. Over to you, Darcy. Alexander. Thank you. We will move our minds into the future of 2050. From the Good News Agency, positive news from the world, year 50th number 434, and the United Nations World News, 2050 Secretary General Report on Sustainable Development Goal 7, affordable and clean energy in unity with the sustainable economic development enhanced by the nationally determined contributions of every country under the Paris Agreement, announces the global reality of affordable and clean energy. Every nation and their world leaders determined efforts included women inspired to save the Mother Earth as wise and intelligent decision makers qualified through their disproportionately direct experience of climate change. We saw world youth mobilize and rise, bringing their innate will to good and enlightened demand for change, using new technologies and spiritual will to spread the world word throughout the lands, people, through education saw the issues clearly, while others through pain and suffering saw the truth between the old money interests of gray and the new green energy needed for our world climate. New age leaders were elected, forward thinking sound leaders who established right relationships and partnerships across all cultures and fields of expertise, bringing forth the sound subjective unity of mankind for the whole of life upon our planet. They swung the tide 
into a great harmonizing and unifying movement. They formulated concrete, realistic plans, reducing each country's national emissions, adopted faster to the impact of climate change, helping less developed countries suffering greatly under larger, richer nations' emissions output and materialistic lifestyle. We at the United Nations announced to the world that our unity of purpose not only met the 2030 45% global reduction, but we succeeded this and successfully met the planned 2050 goal of net zero emissions. The principle of sharing officially divorced of all sanctions has brought forth affordable and clean energy now being experienced, improving the health and well being of humanity and all life upon the planet. This liberation we witness today as new affordable clean energy was first released by science into our world through the saving forces of light working through the United Nations. Liberation as the keynote of this new cosmic energy and its constructive use harnessed the betterment of humanity. It has revolutionized the modes of human experience and brought about an entirely new economic world structure. This governing factor of sharing now circulates freely all natural and economic resources throughout our planetary life, seen now as our new green civilization. It is incapable of being limited or bonded and resides in the hands of the masses to whom it rightly belongs. The United Nations, the symbol of synthesis, protects the potent energy of cosmic substance from misuse. Using its power only as a saving force for goodwill, building, rehabilitating, and reconstruction. This has produced our new energy efficient state of living beauty, warmth, and color. Humanity is now free to pursue the higher aims of spirit in their universally recognized status as a bridging kingdom between the three lower kingdoms of nature and the higher spiritual world of the fifth. World ser servers infused in golden light worked from behind the scenes and through the power of thought and initiatory processes of mastered electricity, the world group of servers split the thought form of materialistic forces which was governing and controlling humanity. The evocative cry of humanity brought forth the unified cooperation of the nations with the Paris Climate Agreement. The new dynamic electric energy from our Lord of the world permitted only within the last century to play upon the center which we call the race of men, shattered and changed the economic and political situation which disrupted adequate funds from pouring into the work of the hierarchy. The saving force arrived as a planetary initiation for matter itself, paralleling those initiations which liberate and release the souls of humankind. This new clean fusion of energy has successfully opened the door into the golden age. It is with joyful heart that we who serve and save within the United Nations declare the human family now free to live and move as one within the beauty of the lighted way of our shared planetary life. To you, Barbara. That was beautiful, Darcy. I don't really have a whole lot to add to that. That was just, I, 
I, I really need to take that in. <laughs> um, so go ahead, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to do the meditation. Um, we can include the slide. The vision of the future has been created, imagined utilizing the April 9th UN News report and the Secretary General uh, Guterres's call for determined world action on climate change in Beijing, China. At China's Belt and Road Forum, Guterres calls for inclusive, sustainable, and durable development. Also, the positive news agency, as well as all of the links that you see, have been utilized to create this vision of possibility. Alexander, could you please bring forth the meditation? Thank you. Strengthening the hands of the group of world servers. Let us utilize the reflective meditation on attracting money for hierarchical purposes. And let us, as a group fusion, stay within ourselves or allowed. I am one with my group brothers, and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates reach and encourage them. The suggestions of this reflective meditation is simple. Used by many simultaneously, it may shatter the impasse, which at present prevents adequate funds pouring into the work which the hierarchy seeks to accomplish. We do this meditation every Sunday morning and we take what we have saved during the previous week and dedicate it to the work and present it in meditation to the Christ and his hierarchy. Whether the sum is large or small, it becomes an attractive magnetic unit in the master's plan. We realize the occult law that to those who give shall be given so that they can give again. We attempt to feel true love sweeping through us and have the fixed intention to express this love to all we contact. It is the great, attractive, and selfless agent in world affairs. Let us achieve a positive, intended personality quietness. Formulate clearly to ourselves and in our own words the answers to the following questions. If money is one of the most important things needed for spiritual work, 
what is the factor which is at present deflecting it away from the work of the hierarchy. Ask yourselves, what is my personal attitude towards money? Do I regard it as a great and possible spiritual asset? Or do I think of it in material terms? What is our personal responsibility in regard to money which passes through our hands? Am I handling it as a disciple of the masters should handle it? As a group, let us ponder on the redemption of humanity through the right use of money. Visualize the money in the world today as concretized energy at present largely used for purely material purposes and for the satisfaction where the individual is concerned of purely personal desire. As a unified group, let us visualize money as a great stream of flowing golden substance, passing out of the control of the forces of materialism into the control of the forces of light. Let us say the following evocative prayer with focused mental concentration 
and from a heartfelt desire to meet spiritual demands. O Thou in whom we live and move and have our being, the power that can make all things new, turn to spiritual purposes, the money in the world, touch the hearts of men everywhere so that they may give to the work of the hierarchy that which has hitherto been given to material satisfaction. The new group of world servers needs money in large quantities. We ask that the needed vast sums may be made available for this potent energy of thine be in the hands of the forces of light. We visualize the work to be done by those groups which claim our present allegiance. The arcane school and the service activities or any and other groups which we know who are attempting to carry out the hierarchical plan. Then, through the creative imagination and by an act of our will, we see untold and unlimited sums of money pouring into the hands of those who seek to do the Master's work. We say aloud and with conviction and emphasis. He for whom the whole world waits has said that whatsoever shall be asked in his name and with faith in the response will see it accomplished. We remember at the same time that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Together, let us add, we ask for the needed money for all hierarchical purposes and can demand it because from the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. As a group, we carefully give consideration for our own responsibility to the plan and each week plan our financial cooperation with the hierarchy. We are practical and realistic and know that if we do not give, we cannot ask, for we have no right to evoke that 
which we do not share. Let us affirm the last stanza of the great invocation together and sound the sacred word, the Om. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you, Darcy. And thank you, everyone. As we draw through the energy from that meditation to the realization of goal seven and of all the goals. And we come to the time when we open up the floor to everyone um, on the call today and welcome um, your comments and thoughts as they constellate around this goal. So if you would like to make a comment as you come back <laughs> into here and now in the conversation, please um, feel welcome to type into the chat box um, and also to use the raise your hand function on your control panel, the little hand. So um, realising that it might take a moment to come back. Um, Thank you all for um, Barbara and Reiko and Darcy for um, bringing us such potent thoughts together around this goal. And um, yeah, the, the strong message of the need for sharing coming through is what really strikes me, but um, yeah. So I will unmute uh, Sheldon. Sheldon, please unmute yourself on your end. Well, thank you. This has been, I'm here at a conference <clears throat> that's going on now for a number of days. And um, one of our topics will be a look at these SDGs led by Martha Gallagher. But uh, I just want to say about this talk, this has been just uh, fabulous uh, for me anyway, because Thank you to the presenters. And um, what's so fabulous about it is not only the, the, the energy and the tone in which we're, we're envisioning this future, but also the fact that, that the wonderful piece, that Darcy, I think that you must have put together with yourself or with others, um, uh, Good News Agency, a marvelous way to envision what it could look like in the future. So one of my questions is, might that be available for us to take a look at and to study and work with? Because I think this is one way to help people um, 
make that leap into the future and then work backwards from it. So thank you again, it's been just um, stunning. Yeah, if that's okay with you, Darcy, we could um, mail that out to people or is there a way that we can post that particular slide? Alexander in the chat box, I'm not sure if that can be done. I will try to put it in the handout section now. So we'll let you know if it will work or you will just see it in the handout. Is that okay, Darcy, for us Absol to? Absolutely. Yeah. As yeah. a PDF of it would be easier, I can send that to you, Alexander. Um, it's good, I have it, yeah. Uh, there is another raised hand. Christine, please unmute yourself. Hello. I'm sorry if you didn't hear me initially. I would like to expand this conversation, seeing that we are energy. I want you to encompass the idea that the cosmic bodies are creating the shift in the ocean levels. And we are calling that earth changes. And the earth has come in and out of existence I believe four times. On the other hand, new information came through to me about a civilization that got this right. And I wish that each of you would encompass this into your work. The history of the Tartarians, who were of course driven out of existence, knew exactly how to create energy from air and water. T-A-R-T-A-R-I-A-N-S. They used bridges, the towers that you see on buildings and churches and obelisks. Connecting that to water and air, which is teeming with energy, this is the direction, looking back and going forward. I feel this was divine intervention at this time. I am a coal miner's daughter. I know what dirty energy can do. I give this to you. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Uh, now you can see in your handout section of the control panel, there is a file with the um, sharing uh, from Darcy. I'd really like to express appreciation to you, to Raiko, because um, just to hear a voice direct from Japan where um, a really, such a really important um, energy problem is going on. It's, it's very direct and special for us to hear that. And also um, to bring us more into the awareness of the um, festival and the changes that are happening in Japan and um, the hope for for that. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed a lot and thank you for listening it. Thank you. Yeah, it's beautiful to have you with us. And I wondered, Barbara Velacor, if you have anything else to say. I remember you were talking about, we're talking about um, 
energy on one level, but how we work with a different energy. And I'm not sure whether you have any more comments to extend that um, at the moment. <laughs> uh, well, sure. You know, um, in our planning call last week, we were talking about discipleship responsibility. And uh, I feel that our discipleship responsibility has to do with how we use energy, <clears throat> excuse me, and how we utilize energy for the common good, to promote goodwill and the will to good. And this all relates to Taurus uh, so much. And so it's very interesting to be talking about SDG number seven because people now are, are really thinking about energy in ways that they never were before. And we know that um, everything is energy and science has proven this, uh, mm. but it's it's very difficult for people to understand that this table and, and that window are just energy. Um, so the more that we can talk about this and uh, think about this, we we have help. You know, a group that puts itself at the disposal of the hierarchy has a lot of help. Um, and we're told to be courageous. Um, and as members of the group of world servers, of course, and the esoteric group, we know our part of our job is to become sensitive to the energies coming in from hierarchy of how how the plan should be modified, adapted, qualified. I don't think that's the right order of those words, but <laughs> um, and it's our job to do that and to to impress on other people. Yes, we can. The the UN. I just heard the other day the the um, I think it was the IPCC just gave 11 years till 2030 that if we don't do something dramatic, we're it's all over. <laughs> we won't be able to go back. So this to me is is a is a big deal. And I think now finally people are getting motivated to actually do something. We've had some events in our local area, and there's a lot of groups working along these lines. So it's very it's very hopeful in a, in a way. Yeah, thank you. Is it anyone else with their hand raised at the moment? No. It it seems um like you're saying, Barbara, that we have um a lot of a lot of help available to us and it seems like um one of the things that we can do as Darcy has laid out for us is to extend our imaginations to to believe what can happen from the real things that are happening that you're describing and maybe to extend into those areas of imagination and possibility that Christine Moore was talking about that that um, there are even more natural ways that we can um, draw energy that we need on the physical levels um, that we haven't discovered yet or that maybe the Teslas and the other sort of sideline scientists of the world have discovered and and um, human consciousness hasn't been ready yet and maybe that's what we're doing, preparing preparing the consciousness to be able to live in that kind of alignment. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Martha. Hi, Martha. I wanted to thank the presenters and again the organizers for the uh, for this very strong presentation and offer and to pick up on something that was said. I think Barbara, you said it that Uranus has been with us in Taurus for uh, a, about a year and that it has a seven more years to go. I wanted to uh, share that. Alongside that, about it, it, about the, at the same time, the Secretary General has reached out to the richest people in the world to, um, in his own peace building way, hold them more accountable for contributing to the solutions to uh, their own uh, access to money. 
and alongside that has come up um, within the finance for development group at the United Nations the um, uh, activation of more and more financial groups one of them uh, hypothesized that within the uh, private sector uh, in the financial sectors there's a pool an asset of 30 trillion dollars and that the trend has been shifting recently toward moving into the area where money is actually being generated, hopefully in legitimate ways. We've often, we used to think that if we could somehow wrest the uh, money away from dark sources, that it would solve the problem. But I think the consciousness shift toward working together more intensely and from a place of power in the areas of light is going to make a huge difference in the next 10 years with regard to generating funds. So I so appreciate your using the meditation, particularly on generating money. Thank you to everybody. Um, if I could say something, this is Barbara. Yeah, go, Barbara. Uh, um, well, um, well, also, you know, we are so the the media keeps pounding in about how much money it's going to cost to build these new systems of energy, but but truly, um, if we really have some long term thinking, these systems will save money. Uh, th there's a, an amazing study uh, done by, organized by Paul Hawken and his group called Drawdown, and uh, it's a very it's a group of scientists who have put together a report about what are the hundred most effective ways to mitigate climate change to to start going backwards, and the point is made that th these these systems would create so many jobs, it would save so much money. Uh, by the equivalent of, say, taking cars off the road in terms of energy use, that we have to switch. You know, people, intelligent people, have to switch their thinking to say, well, we have to pressure lawmakers to to really get with a message that this is going to make money. And if we think of as esotericists, how that money that's going to be saved and made could be used for hierarchy, then we're 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 good. We're golden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so much of it is about changing the climate of thinking, isn't it? Yeah, just can't see any more hands raised um, at the moment, can I? Um, Alexander has posted something else that Darcy asked to post in response to that query before. Um, there's a um, comment from Diana saying, thank you, Reiko, for your presentation and thank you for the handouts. Oh, I can't see that. And but there's a comment here from Martha, Martha saying thank you, Barbara, for your recommendation to read Paul Hawkins' book Drawdown. I think it's a very important point uh, that Barbara brought about the understanding that everything around us energy and that it's our responsibility to express that idea through our life and communicate it clearly uh, to people around us and as we now in the new moon of Taurus and we start building up the energy towards the Vesak festival I think it's 
especially important for us as we focus in our meditation, uh, coming together as one world group, uh, keep our focused intention clear uh, on the progress of humanity. Uh, and through this work that we do, uh, strengthening the thought forms of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, I think it's one of the most um, clear paths, outlined, defined paths of the evolution. And so our focus on these goals is uh, one of the services that we can provide. And thank you everyone for joining this circle rhythmically following the monthly uh, rhythm of this work. And uh, um, thank you very much. And uh, I think if there is no more uh, comments or sharings, I uh, would like There's to... Just yes? One, one more from um, another one from Martha in here. I see. And Martha says, thank you, Reiko, for reminding us about the ethical principle called the precautionary principle that guides us to look to consequences before we argue on the basis of economic growth, the planning of a nuclear plant near water. This is very brave to state what you did. And oh, Diane Adams has hands up. And Ross Wither has a hand up as well. Okay, so I will unmute uh, Ross Wither. Oh. Uh, Ross Wither, please unmute yourself. Oh, I didn't know the hand was up, but thank you for everything. <laughs> thank you, good to hear your voice. Yeah. And I don't see any other hands raised. I don't see any others. Diane has a question. Diane Adams. Um, there was a comment that I already read. Yeah, so it's. Great. Sorry, I interrupted you, Alexander. No, ab absolutely. Um, so um, I suggest as we work this in the following months and especially in the time of the VASAC, we keep our focused intention together. And uh, we invite you to join our uh, next uh, monthly cycle focusing on um, the next goal, goal 13, uh, on climate action. And we invite you to join in your daily meditation, bring your focus to this goal in implementation of the goal 13 climate action. And then when we get together uh, during Gemini new moon on June 4th, we would meditate together, bring our focus and sound our collective intention on universal climate action. And our focalizer said this webinar will be Dot Maver, uh, Karen Cangliose, and Tara Stewart. And uh, I also want to invite you to join our coming VASAC webinar on May 15th. That will be the first day of the seven day period that uh, uh, Tibetan recommended us to observe for the Vesak. And together we will reflect on the topic of building capacity, coming from vision to service. And so we invite you to reflect on the question, how do we develop our discipleship capacity to manifest the vision? And our panelists for this webinar will be 
Michael Robbins, Sergei Smirnov, and Steve Nation. So please join us on May 15th. And probably this is the time for us to come to our closing mantra. Mm. So as we close this webinar today, and we stand together knowing that as we cross the threshold into the new era, the forms that we have been dealing with are falling away. So as we sound the second great invocation, which Darcy had us sound earlier, to bring us to a close today, let us stand in our group capacity to hold ourselves open to what is emerging in this time of great change on this beautiful planet we all call home. Let the forces of light bring illumination to all humankind. Let the spirit of peace be spread abroad. May all those of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the great ones. So let it be and help us to do our part.